Hello, I'm Steph from iDriver Classic and today I'm showing you how to build up your MGC dashboard. Now I'm just showing you how to fit it, just showing you how everything fits in as per manufacturer spec from new. Now, everything was in a jumble this morning, so one of the first tips that I'm going to give you is get everything laid out methodically because when you're knee deep in doing this and you're feeling quite frazzled because something's not fitting in the hole properly, you're going to want to have everything exactly where you need it. So first of all, We've got this, which I'll do a grand reveal on in just a second when we fit it. But this is our dash. Now, this has been purchased from MGOC Spares. And you'll get to see, once we unpackage it, that it's really good quality. Now, I talk a lot about this in videos, where if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Now, I would always suggest, if you are going to be fitting a dash panel like this, spend some money and get yourself a new one. If your old one is just looking past it or it's got dents in or anything like that because remember where else are your eyes apart from on the road when you're driving they're on the dash so if you end up with a knackered old dash in a beautifully restored car that everyone's admiring from the outside and you're sitting inside and looking at a dash that looks like it's been through a war you're almost doing yourself a disservice for all the hard work you've done so far so let me talk about all the elements that you're going to need if you are doing this at home so first of all is this plastic surround. We've got quite a good one here. I'm not sure if it's new or whatnot. But anyway, there were quite a lot of bits that came with this car, which you'll know if you've watched this series before. We've got some sellotape. I'm going to come back to you with what that's for in just a second. You've got your light switch. You've got your ignition. You've got your panel lights. Now, if you've never seen panel lights before, essentially you can switch the lights on and off on your dash. And the reason they used to do that in old cars was because people essentially, or apparently, got distracted whilst driving with the lights on on the dash, which has never been a problem for me, but you can do it, turn it off on a Morris Minor as well. Okay, so you've got this as your next thing. Now, you might recognise these switches because they're just standard switches. However, it's really important that you know which switches you're fitting where. And this is for one reason, because as you've probably heard, there's two clicks on this, which tells us that that's the wiper switch, because it's two speed wipers on these. The next one is single. So that's your heater one, let's put that there. You've got these, I mean, these look so complicated. These things, can you see them at home? And they're part of the heater control setup. We've got this tiny little bit of chrome trim. It's easy to see why everything got lost because it's so small. Then you've got these silver rings. Now these sit, and you want to keep these, sit over, um, you know what I've done? I've fitted the top on these panel, these panels which I shouldn't have done. Anyway, it's easy for me to pull off. So you essentially you fit those on once they're in the dash and that's what covers it up, but you fit it on once you've done that. So just put, Pop that there. And then you have got this thing. So this sits in the dash, okay? And what happens is, is behind that, you've got your indicator lights. And I can't remember, there's another, sw another switch in there. I'll lay it over the top and tell you what that's for. But we'll, we'll see anyway when we fit it. Now this is a little bit finickety, but essentially what happens is, is when it sits inside, is you've got, so I don't know if you can see that at home, just there. Um, and over the top, you have these little bits of green plastic. Now, I said to Kev, how do they fit in the car? And he said, with sellotape. And I said, is that a bodge? What, what's the score there? And he said, no. He said he's taken them apart from new, in, you know, straight out the factory. Nobody's had the dash out before. And they have been secured with sellotape. So if you're wondering what that was for, that was for that. Now, let me show you this dash. Oh, and I should also mention as well that when you are doing this, if you're doing it onto a table like we are, a workbench, always put down some form of blanket or soft furnishings just to protect your investment because there's nothing worse than when you're working on something and it ends up full of scratches or dirt. I hate that. Anyway, we talk about quality and these aren't probably the cheapest in the market, which isn't what I should say. However, and I've seen it so much lately with ignition coils and points of condensers and stuff. When you buy cheap, you end up buying twice or it wears out quicker. Now, I don't know if you can see that at home, but you can see how 
good the quality is. You can see the finish on it. It's just really nice. And as I say, I feel like I'm on QVC as I walk you through this. As I say, it's a piece of your car that is going to have eyes on it quite often. So it's so important that you go for something decent, either a decent second-hand unit or go to somebody like MGOC Spares and get yourself one of these. That's where this one's from. And that's where we are. So we've got the dash panel, we've got all the pieces. I know there's a few clocks and things to go in, but I felt like they were quite obvious. I wanted to show you the little finickety bits before we fitted it in. Glove box, probably not gonna to touch that for now, but yeah, so let me show you how this all goes together. I must apologize because I gave you some incorrect information. I told you that we were gonna fit this first. However, we're going to fit these little plastic circles. Now, if you're wondering which way to fit them up, you see that you've got a shiny side and a matte side. You want the shiny side facing you when you stick it down. So you put one there and you pop one there. So they sit over the triangles. Now, I should probably also issue a caveat that you probably shouldn't be using your teeth for sellotape, but well, that's how we're gonna roll today. So there we go. And you stick that down and you just wanna be really, really careful with that probably need to trim that tape up a wee bit. It always feels like such a scam, doesn't it, when you find out that manufacturers do stuff like this and just fix it down with tape. Right, time to fit this bit of plastic. Now, when you are fitting this, remember, these are only self-tapping screws, so you don't want to fit it, um, sorry, you don't want to over-tighten it because it will crack the plastic. Um, it's also incredibly fiddly. So I'm going to tighten that down. But again, I'm probably just going to put it finger tight for now as I go round. Um, but the other thing I should probably say is, is don't fit the top ones, but I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so we take this piece, if you can see there at home, and we slot that in carefully. Now that needs to sit over those little green things that you've just stuck down, the little green circles and you need to line the holes up with the plastic piece on the dash. That's why I said we didn't put those two screws in, because we knew, well, I say we knew this was coming. Oh, I didn't, did I? Um, it's all new to me. But that then secures it in, and thank goodness, because I'll tell you what, the sellotape that we've used is absolutely rubbish, and the blooming things keep sliding off. Okay, so you've put on your plastic bit, you've screwed in this metal bit and then with that metal bit do you remember if you come here I'll show you again you've got that little hole and you'll notice that it's got a little flat on the top which matches up perfectly with your panel light switch which also has that little flat on the top so you know which way up it needs to go now the one thing I will say is is that if you are doing this at home um, and you've not done this before, please check that all your switches work because otherwise you are going to have, well, you're going to have a bit of hell on, to be honest, because sometimes you put these things back together and you find out the switches aren't working. Now, the next thing is, is before we put the little black, I don't know what we're going to call it, toggle, put that back on. We just need to get this screwed in. So let me screw this in for you. Okay, this is second take on this one. We're going to fit the speedo. Now, there's a reason that, um, in fact, I'm going to show you this before we do. So you see, you've got the speedo's got to go through the main hole, but then the little tail's got to go through there. So what we need to do, and I've had Kev barking at me, and he's going, don't scratch the speedo, uh, don't scratch the dash, don't scratch the dash. And I'm thinking, no, I've seen the price of these dashes, I won't be scratching it, but also feeling mildly terrified at the same time. So you need to be half human, half octopus, feed it through, but automatically start offering it through, like poke that through, and then feed it on in. Now, one of the things that I will say is, is that, and I actually made this mistake myself back when I was very young, is I couldn't get something to fit into plastic and I just essentially started like forcing it through and it cracked. So if you can't get something to fit through on your plastic, if you're a day one, like I was, and you don't already realize this, um, don't try and force the issue, try and, um, try and re-offer it again to see if you can get it to fit. Now I've got to try and fit this ridiculously, 
oh, why is everything so fiddly? I want to know if all the people in the factory had exactly the same issue as me. Probably didn't, probably had a brain. Kev started laughing when I said, well, go on then, how do I fit it? Because he's dab hand with these things. And he said, well, you want to try getting it around the right way first. I never ever tell anyone I'm an expert. I'm just a girl having a go in the garage and showing you how I do it at home. And sometimes I sound probably like I actually know what I'm talking about. And half the time I don't because I'm following books or teachings. And I hope that for some other people at home that are just as silly as me, I give you some hope that you might be able to do some of this in your garage at home. Because you know what? I always think that we can all build a Lego set. We can all do Meccano, or most of us can, I think. And I always, when I start getting really stressed and I'm like, oh, I can't do it, I'm so stupid. I always think to myself, well, I could do a dab hand with a Lego kit, so I'm sure I can have a go at this. And sometimes that helps reduce the stress. Sometimes it just makes me more frustrated. But yeah, we're gonna get this all screwed on. Um, I swear, a minor dashboard is much easier to fit than this, but I'm not gonna complain. I'll show you the speedo. And remember, if you're doing this at home for yourself, you want this to be on the left-hand side. And I believe that's the same. Look at pictures for both British vehicles and vehicles which were sold overseas. The next thing we're gonna fit is the rev counter. So if you flip it on over, I'll show you how this fixes in. So you've got these that almost look like fountain pen nibs that go on, just slot in like that. And you take the little brass fixing and I've made a wild assumption that it is brass there. Um, and you just fix that down. You've just got to be careful when you do it. It doesn't splay out. I wonder if, hold on, what if I get both fitted on? That'll probably make more sense. There we go. So that's that fixed in. And there we have it. We've got both of our gauges fitted. So the next one that we need to do is probably the fuel gauge. And that slots into there. Now we're going to flip that over once again. Let's be a bit of a dab hand with this now. Joke, still taking me 10 times as long as anybody else. Anyway, I'm nattering on, sorry. Let me talk you through what we've done today um, so far. So we stuck the, just remembering the sequence, we stuck the little plastic things in. Remember, shiny side facing you. We then put the metal bracket in this metal bracket here. We then put the panel light in, we put the chrome ring round, we fitted the, the knob, and then we put the gauges in. And remember the order we put them in, and I don't know if there's a thing to this, but we're gonna just decide now that this is now the order. We put it in speedo, rev counter, and then the fuel gauge. So the next thing to do, of course, is to fit all those switches we were looking at earlier. After a brief intermission, um, we're finally back on the job. We had to have a break, we had to go and find a few bits, order a few bits, and one of the bits that we had to order was an overdrive switch. So if you need to order one of these yourselves, it is Lucas Overdrive Switch or with the code 35545. Be helpful to somebody, I'm sure. So you take this, and what you want to do is when you get your pack, you'll find you've got this little jaggedy ring in black, you'll find that you've got this, which is your chrome star ring. And what you want to do is so you can get the tension right is you put the black onto there, you feed it on through, and you want it facing downwards, just like this. Hold on, that's right. And then you want your normal and overdrive. Pop that on. And you'll notice that it's sli shaped slightly differently to, um, to your others. And the idea is, is that you can flick your finger underneath and just flick it on. So there you go. I'm going to tighten that up with the screwdriver, but that's how it should look. Now this can get a little bit tricky laying it out in the centre if you don't have an image. So feel free to follow along and take any screenshots you might need. So when you're putting these in, you want to do your single click control first, that one goes there, that is your heater. The second one, which is two clicks, so it's easy to remember, is your wipers, so they go there. Now usually in this third slot here, you would have your 
wiper washer but what we're going to do instead of having it like a pump mechanism a little bit like on the Morris Minor that you might have seen we are going to put an electric one in now we are looking for another one of these switches so that's not going in today so that's going to stay blank but I wanted to explain to you what we were doing with that just over here you've got goodness I can't remember you've got your ignition and then you've got your choke I think it is you know what I just have to keep going back to the picture and consulting I'm trying to do it anyway but anyway let me fumble along and then I'll show you Now look, I definitely struggle with that a lot more than someone with half a brain cell probably would. But as you can probably see, it's really, really easy. Um, I think sometimes you can just get yourself like, you know when you're just in a bit of a rage when you're trying to do stuff and that's the worst time to do anything on cars. That and when you're in a rush or when it's raining, that's another absolute mood hoover. Right, so the next thing that we're doing is we are feeding through, just had these things laid out, the oil and water sensor. So there you go. Um, water to temp, bleh, water temperature, I should say. So posh way of saying temperature gauge. Right, let's feed this on through. Now, what we did with the wire for the choke was we wound it up and then we taped it down. So we'll do the same with that because I know you're probably watching us feed that all through. You know what I haven't done? got absolute cotton wool on my head today haven't I like I haven't taken this off so again it's just a little bracket you know like we had on the back of the other gauges um, anyway I'll crack on and get this on hurrah that's in um, well might just have to twizzle that round slightly there we go that's bang on and remember as I always say if it's the first time you're watching one of these videos is I'm not a professional by any means i'm just a girl having a go in a garage and showing you all it's possible at home because i think sometimes people build up the skill set that you need and they make it sound like a dark art and people get so worried about doing stuff and i always like to say we can all have a go at stuff i mean brakes are probably not a day one job but what i'm saying is the stuff like this is anyone can have a go at it it's actually not too testing once you get into it well, I say that, but now I'm looking for a, looking for the right chrome thing to go on. Should we see if it's this one? Oh, I think so. Just a bit of trial and error, really, because I've reached that point where there's like a few last bits and pieces to go on. Um, and this is one of them. But hey-ho, we're getting there. Ah, there we go. Right, so we've got most of the bits and pieces done now. Let's get these in. These are, I think these are the heater controls. We've still got the map light to go in and we've got the map switch and there's a few other bits like this that are just knocking around. So we'll find homes for all of it, but yeah, let's see what's next. Next up are these mucky pups to go in, which are your heater and ventilation controls. You see that at home there? They don't appear to be handed, I might be wrong on this, but they both look sort of the same, like I can't see any differences between them. So there's nothing that's said to me that they both can't go in, but I mean famous last words because it would be a case of we come to turn it on later and it won't work, will it? But um, I'm just going to, I'm having some right old problems getting this threaded on today. But anyway, I'm going to get these uh, threaded on and then I'm going to show you how we fit the chrome. We're having a few technical difficulties with this switch, so just ignore it for now. I'm gonna to talk to you about this chrome strip. Now, when you fit this, you'll notice that you've got these little metal tabs on the back. Now, something that I've noticed is, look, can you see there at home? They do wiggle about a bit. So to make sure that you don't snap them off, you've just gotta almost line them all up with the holes and then gently feed it in because it's like you're playing with all the elements here. You're playing with brittle plastic, rickety little bits of chrome. Oh God, it's enough to send you over the edge. 
Every time I hear that snap, I worry. Can you feel? So I've just gently done it with the palm of my hand rather than applying really localised pressure. Um, you can tell that I muck about with all these awful brittle 60s antiques, can't you? Because you have to do all this nonsense with those as well. So that's all in. So that's just decoration. It doesn't actually serve any purpose. And I think Kev is bringing the switch now um, to get that back in there. So we'll get that back in. And then all we've got left to do, I think, is the map light. Although I've got no idea. I think that goes on the blanking plate, which can go on there. But I said to Kev, you've got a blanking plate. And he said, no, he said he's going to put radio in. So today at the end of this, you'll still see a blank hole there, a blank hole there. I don't know what. Oh, it's the, um, i sure I think what won't there. It's the lock, isn't it? It's locking mechanism for your glove box. Anywho, let's crack on. Next up is the map light switch and the map light. Now this is a really tight fit and you might find the same thing. Now what we did um, is we used a very fine file just to make that hole a little bit bigger. But still it's a very tight fit. You'll be able to see it only just gets in there. So we'll just secure that down. leave that there for now but again it's just one of these little um these little pulls now you might notice if you come in a little bit closer i'll show you here you've got the little what i like to call the little dot which is so fiddly but basically to get these on if you're trying to do it from home and you've never done this before to get them off you push it in from here so you need a really small little uh, flathead screwdriver but to fit it you have to be again a bit like an octopus like you have two of these things you want to just get it on like that and then ta-da okay i'm only mildly stressed i just called kev over to check what i was doing and he said just push it in so you're seeing me just push this through with brute force and I hate 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 doing that so I'm so careful with things especially when they're not my own oh and he said well it's got to be tight so you get a good earth but I think this is a lot tighter than it should be oh blimey right that appears to be in okay so that bulb was right now the next thing to put on is the map light cover now, you might see, I don't know if you can see Kev scrabbling around in the background through all his toolboxes, but that is entirely my fault because I did have two screws in my hand and then one just bounced off and it's gone into that missing dimension. You know where all the lost socks go? Um, so who knows where that's gone? But anyway, it's gone with like all my tights. I don't know where they all go. Um, they're, but they're now nestled safely in the lost dimension with the screw. Oh, so annoying. Anyway, this is how you fit it in. And when you're doing it, I probably should mention, by the way, you need to make sure that the glass is facing down into the footwell. Now, I know that this might seem really obvious to you at home, if, especially if you're a seasoned professional. But for a lot of people, like myself, that are day oneers and watch stuff like this, I always used to... Um, I always used to wonder how, uh, you know, how it almost felt like people were missing steps. So sometimes I'm a bit simple in the way I describe things. I was watching something the other day, actually, and I wanted to know how to do it. And it was a crochet pattern. And this woman just made this assumption that we knew loads of stuff before the video started. And I thought, no, I don't know any of this missing bit. And it just meant that the, re the whole thing was redundant to me. So anyway, whilst Kev carries on looking for another screw to match up with this one, I thought I'd just walk you through what we've put into the dash, what we need to order and what's missing. So first of all, running from left to right, it's like doing a car review this. You've got your overdrive switch, you've got your fuel gauge, you've got your rev counter, you've got your speedo with your trip clock, You've got your oil and temperature gauge, your heater control, your choke, your ignition barrel. This one that's missing, that is the one where we're going to put in an electric pump for the window washers. This is two clicks, so that's windscreen washers. This single click here, that's for your heater. This is your heater and ventilation controls. Remember, we're still waiting for those top bits to come. Into the centre here, you fit this chrome trim with the four clips on the back. This is where your, uh, your lock goes 
for your glove box. I asked Kev about that earlier, by the way, and he said, and I didn't know he was doing this, but because there's a few keys rattling round, he said what he's doing is he's replacing all the door barrels, this barrel and everything, and I think the boot as well, just so everything matches up. And then over here, finally, you've got your map light and you've got your control for popping that on. And that is kind of your dash and this blank section here is for your radio. So hopefully that is a little bit useful. I do think this was for the blanking plug. Now, once you've done all of that, you get whoever the proper adult is in this scenario. So for me, that's Kev, to just quickly quality control what you've done. And once you've done all of that, you tighten stuff down. Because you'll see that I've only done stuff finger tight so far. And that today, my friends at home, is us building up this MGC dash. Now, you might want to also give it a little bit of a wipe down at the end. Now, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, that's the end of today's tutorial. The next thing we're going to show you next week is we're going to be talking bodywork. Now, I'm going to get Kev to give us his tips on doing it at home. Now, remember, if you do it at home, you may not get the same finish that somebody doing it in a Jaguar, a Rolls Royce, or some sort of specialist high-end dealership where you're paying tens of thousands of pounds to have it done. However, you can still get a jolly good finish at home. So next week, we're going to talk to you about doing a cheap and cheerful job at home, how to get the best finish, how much time, top tips, we're going to talking sandpaper grit, all the rest of it, all the nitty gritty that you need to know on getting your bodywork as good as you can get it at home. Because as we talked about when we did the marina videos, prep work is half the battle of getting a really great finish. And I'm also finding this, as some of you may have known, I was talking about the house renovation the other week, I'm finding this with the walls at home. I'm applying those skills to the walls. So even if you're not prepping cars, take it from someone who is learning how to take off horrible wallpaper that's been there since time began and trying to sort out the walls. The skills you learn here, you can apply in your own home as well. So it's a double whammy. Now that's it from me today. Um, hopefully this will get the seal of approval from Kev. But if you see us do it again, you'll know that we probably didn't. So until next time, take care and drive safely.